welcome to the Summer Artist Showcase. My name is Anna Casillas, and I'm the Visual Arts Coordinator at the Art Depot Gallery. Thank you all for joining us. I'd like to say a special thank you to the mayor, the city council, and the city manager for their wonderful and continued support of the arts. Our artist here today, his artwork speaks for itself. It's unique and captivating. His artwork has been featured, featured in many galleries as well as numerous publications. Please help me welcome Stuart Fingerhut. Welcome Stuart, it's a delight to have you here today. Thank you, it's incredible to be here and I, I wanna just say thank you for everyone that's uh, in attendance. Uh, it's a really special evening, so thank you for sharing it with me. And thank you to Anna for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. We're excited to learn more about you. Um, I have to say your work is amazing and we get a lot of people coming in and complimenting your work. So it's exciting. Um, they have great taste. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> or yes, questionable <laughs> taste. We don't know yet. <laughs> um, so share with us your story on how you got started as an artist. Uh, the art thing, uh, everything that I've kind of done has been anchored in design. So professionally, is that's what I do, a uh, designer. Um, the art thing stemmed from a lot of the explorations I was doing in the design um, side of things, whether it was lighting, uh, whether even dabbling in jewelry design. Um, but this is kind of an extension of both the formal aspects of some of the work I was doing, um, the production aspects using what we would call digital fabrication, so some of the latest technologies that are out there to make things, um, and also using materials that are kind of unconventional in this setting, industrial materials, um, metals, um, materials that would just, laminates, et cetera, that are just commonly not seen in an art space, more in like a construction site or a residential project. So through that and through weaving these things together, I was able to develop um, what I would say is some very unconventional in the world of sculpture. Um, some of the assemblies, um, some of the color combinations, um, the scale of things, and you know, the, I would say the very dramatic how things are coming off the wall rather than what you would maybe traditionally see in painting or illustration, which is a 2D experience. Um, I've strived to make my work um, a very 3D experience. So you have a little bit of a different experience from the left side to the right side, upside, downside, and of course, depending on what the lighting condition is. So um, as much as we love to see stuff on Instagram or online, I think there's a lot that's lost um, from just seeing a, a two-dimensional view of this work, and that's really what, um, what my aim is. You know, something that will get people to interact with it in real life and see, thing, see it or see things from a, a different perspective. Thank you. Yeah, and seeing it in person is a totally different experience than just looking at it in a photo. So it's a joy to have it in the gallery. Um, you touched a little on it, but your work is so unique and you use a variety of mediums. Um, you do sculptures, you do installation pieces, you do digital art. Um, what are the advantages to using these types? And um, do you often switch between them? Do you go from digital art to sculpture? And Yes. So, you know, um, creatively, I, w I don't want to say I bore easily, but I've just, um, you know, like all of us, we're just overflowing with inspirations or ideas. So for me, due to the constraints we might have on our day-to-day -day time, moving across the different mediums, if I have a few minutes, something maybe I do on my phone or on my laptop, I can be in a digital arena, versus if I have four to six hours to explore in the studio and come up with some new configurations of a sculptural um, setting. Um, so, you know, the, be, the ability to bounce back and forth across mediums, as well as allow there to be a feedback loop of the mediums. So applying, say, a graphic to one of these sculptures, or having the backdrop be a graphic that might be in the hallway to accentuate what you're seeing. So the interplay or the dialogue of the composition, or just, hey, that's pretty cool. Can I do something with that? Or I have five minutes, so let's dabble in here. Or you know, how do they all kind of come together for this show specifically um, to try and tell an overall story? Um, which is, you know, the title of the show, Shapes in Space. 
Yeah, no, and it's really cool to see the sculptures and then see the installation piece. If you haven't seen it, please check it out at the Art Depot. Um, and then your digital art, it all comes together quite nicely. Uh, now, you have artwork in galleries, but you have also done um, artwork where it's decorative lamps, home goods, and jewelry. How did you start into the journey of using art as also, um, you know, something that people can also use on a daily basis? Um, well, I would define it more as, you know, there's design, and design is usually anchored in something that has a function, a chair or a light. Um, a table versus art, which um, for the most part is uh, a functionless object. Uh, excuse me, a functionless object, an object that's more of an aesthetic thing. Um, so, for the design, what is its purpose? For the art, what is its beauty, or what is its its aesthetic qualities that can either um, brighten a space, um, something that's kind of intriguing or provocative to the viewer. Um, maybe questioning what it is they're looking at or how it came to be, or even is it the right side up or is it the wrong side down? <laughs> so, um, you know, a lot of this, you know, the, the, again, the foundation was design, but moving beyond something that has a function into something that um, can definitely be more exploratory, experimental, um, and also I only need to make one, great, <laughs> versus I need to make 50, that's, uh, you know, it's a bigger challenge too. Um, but I've, you know, aside from all that, I would say that this type of work has been very, very freeing. You know, it's not the confines or the legacy of what a chair is or what a light is. It's, it's whatever you want it to be, you know, so the ability to just explore. Um, and also there is a bit of a feedback loop. Could something like this turn into something functional? Perhaps. Um, but from a purely art uh, perspective, it's, is it a, a weird object? Is it something we haven't seen before? Great, then that means that's, I'm on the right path. Though I will say your lamps um, are really awesome. I like, took a look at them in the magazines and they were, they were something definitely memorable. Thank you. <laughs> Now, um, for part of the time at the Art Depot, we had a comment box so that people could come in and put in compliments, comments, or even questions. So it was really nice. Um, we selected some of our favorites, and I'd like to share them with you. So our first one here, um, this person said, I love your artwork. I really enjoyed the motion and the durability demonstrated in your artwork which is a great compliment to you. Um, their question for you is, what do you hope people take away from looking at your artwork? Um, you know, really for, for me, I, I would say I was an outsider coming into the art world, the art world. Um, so, you know, first and foremost is I, I did the workshops, you know, at the Art Depot Gallery, which were really rewarding. Um, but I would say that the accessibility to what art is, is definitely a driving factor in what I'm doing. In terms of, this doesn't have to be the most expensive, mirror polished, grand scale thing to be considered art. This can be perhaps paper, perhaps cardboard, it's accessible, perhaps plastic. It's accessible by you know those that might not consider themselves artists to venture in and just whether they have uh, hesitation or reservation to be confident in, in anything goes. It's completely open. Art is what you want it to be. And this is my um, trajectory of kind of sharing my ideas um, in this setting versus someone that might be doing something with clay or spray paint mm -hmm. or going to a car scrapyard and getting, you know, old car parts and welding something crazy together. Um, but really it's Art can be whatever you want. It can be accessible by anyone at any age. And I think that's really what the, the, the gateway is to this world. Um, aside from what we see, aside from the dollar values that are on some of these pieces, um, just do it, you know? You can try it. If you don't like it, try something else. If you don't like that, try something else. And keep trying until maybe you find something that you know fits for you. That's a good attitude, I like it. Another one of the comments, um, they simply said, your work stands in a class of its own. So that's cool. <laughs> that's like top class, like front of the class or like back of the class? I don't, I don't know. They put an exclamation point, so I'm pretty yeah. sure it's. <laughs> and they wanted to know, what is your inspiration behind these pieces? 
Uh, for a majority of my work, um, you know, there's just so much around us. So inspirations currently are just the amazing vastness of the celestial space. What is going on out there at the most macro level? Light years, things we really can't comprehend. Um, on the flip side of that are things that are happening, happening at the micro level. You know, how electrons go around nucleus of atoms, quarks, etc. So my work is definitely anchored in biomorphic influence, you know, living things. It's also um, anchored to um, maybe the motion or movement of um, things that are microscopic inside our bodies to galaxies orbiting around other galaxies. So you can see, you know, both the names that I've used as well as some, the, some of these forms, um, I've tried to create, you know, a representation of things that are out there that are just kind of impossible to understand in some, in some ways um, and or ideas that I have about some of these things that you just can't really put into words. You just need to put them into visuals. So art, science, um, you know, for me, they just kind of go hand in hand. Um, and that's very broad and maybe too general. But um, I would say that's been definitely a driving force for a lot of this work, for all this work. The stuff out, you know, the prints out there, these crazy things, the installation, you know, it looks like, a, you know, birds or a, swar uh, a school of fish or a swarm of birds, um, you know, reflecting you know, things around us, living things, so. No, thank you, that was, that's very inspirational. Um, and last question for you, um, how do you think your work has evolved um, throughout this time from when you started and, you know, kind of where do you see yourself going? Yeah, the, the original work was garbage. So I'm very, I'm very <laughs> happy that, you know, it, it's evolved from, um, and, you know, every, you know, for maybe all of us, you know, for me specifically, um, anything I would do, I would document it, take a photo. So um, the process for me is doing tons of exploration, studies, we would call them, and then identifying the pieces that we want to realize um, with proper materials, the proper formation, all the nice finishes. Um, so where it's evolved now is having a better understanding of the material properties, um, things that should and shouldn't be you know, formed together, some of the forms, um, even learning how to you know, create these, what the limitations are. Um, and moving ahead, it's you know, figuring out a way to basically scale things up. So the installation that we have in the Art Depot, how can I make that twice as big? Architectural, you know, anchored to buildings, going from building to building. Oh, wow. For these, can these be, you know, itself, if you turn on its side, can that be a public art pavilion for, say, you know, a, a city center? So if we remove scale, that could maybe be at Coachella, a big <laughs> pavilion. Um, some of the other pieces, um, yeah, are they're not so much fixed to a, a backer, but anchored to space. So architectural scale, maybe free floating in space. Um, there's, you know, infinite people, artists at the highest levels that I can reference as inspiration to me. So hopefully if things go well, I can continue on this path and um, develop these works, develop digital works, d experimenting in virtual reality now, 3D printing, uh, laser cutting, all these new technologies to make things bigger, bigger, bigger. And just create, you know, really unique experiences. That's really the goal, you know. Things that people haven't seen or haven't experienced, and they can do it um, in real life, you know, first person. No, thank you. Um, and it would be really great to see your installation piece at the Art Depot, like, doubled in size or tripled in size, because, I mean, it's already really impressive, but to imagine it on a gr broader scale, it's all that much more. I mean, I'm ready. Just get me. I just, I just need a giant. Anyone have a giant warehouse they're not using? And we'll we'll do it. We can do it. So that's what also you know. Not to segue back, but um, some of the processes, you know, having one unique item that we can replicate in every direction and fill up something like the size of this hall. So um, with enough time and enough resources, for sure. So the scale of things proportionally makes it makes it easy. Well, thank you so much, Stuart, for a wonderful interview. Um, we've learned a lot, and it was great speaking with you. Thank you. This has been wonderful. Thank you again for, for having me and for, you know, watching this, listening, <laughs> listening to me. Um, and, yeah, it was a great experience. You know, this was a, a huge, my first solo show. 
So I really appreciate the opportunity um, and everyone's just been great. So thank you. If you'd like to see more of Stuart's work, um, you can go ahead and visit the foyer outside the Grover W. Taylor City Council Chambers or visit the Art Depot Gallery. His art will be up until September 25th. And if you like hands-on art, please check out our Make and Create program. Our next one is on September 9th from 1 to 4. Uh, you get a chance to um, make our featured art project. So it's a really fun to do and a delight. So for more information about this or any of our other cultural arts events, please visit our website at arts.fontana.org or call the Art Depot Gallery at 909-349-6975. See you next time.